Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today I'm going to give you guys a little bit of update of tech versus fintech versus banking. Real world example, my whole life, untorn here. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about that. Okay, so if you don't know the story here, I left the banking industry, I don't know, some months ago. I have no idea how long it's been. Uh, I'm taking a mental break, unwinding, not thinking about quant finance, not thinking about any of this. Of course, I'm making YouTube videos, I'm podcasting. So quant finance is always on my mind, regardless of how far I would like to take a break from things. It's always really there. I can't get away from it. But I've applied to zero jobs, and yet I have three interesting opportunities, all kind of on the horizon at varying stages of the process of getting into jobs. And it's pure tech, it's fintech, and it's banking. And oddly enough, my network has played out to the point that people have reached out and said, Dimitri, I saw you are uh, leaving banking. I saw you're not working. We would love to have you come work for us. I understand you're taking a break. Please take all the time you need, preferably like a month or two, and then hurry and get back to work here because we need someone to help us with our problems or I have a position I need to fill. We would love to have you come and help us. So I'm like, okay, I got to think this through here. Uh, the tech firm, just to disclose part of this, is one of the FANG tech firms, massive tech firms, ML engineering, uh, software engineer interview style, going through coding in Python, of course. And that is one of the downfalls in the struggles here of why I'm hesitant to interview with them. They wanted to interview me, I don't know, a couple times in the last six months-ish to a year. And they said, you know, if you need a month or two to study up, take a month or two. If you need six months to study up, take six months. But you're going to have to do an interview, coding interview in Python. So that's fine. I've used Python. I've worked in Python, but it has been years. And then when we do use it in the banking side, at least where I'm at, I just don't get a lot of hands-on, you know, time with it because we're using SaaS so much and then as a validator, things come across my desk. It's in SAS, it's in R, it's in Python. I don't have time to really sit and code and like do the full analytics on it. So I don't program in Python a lot. So I'm going to have to do a full studying. And they told me to use elite coding, I think is what the website's called. And there's examples on there and you can practice and do all that. And that'd be an awesome job in many ways, just because I'd have to, you know, have some freedoms. The best part of the job is I would work from home full time. I wouldn't have to deal with going to the office and the commute, which I absolutely hate. I can't stand driving into the office, being there, you know, Monday to Friday, nine to five. I don't like the rigidity in the scheduling. I like a little bit more flexibility. Not having to commute saves me on average about 10 hours a week. So 10 hours is a ton of time I could be doing other things. So that's kind of the exciting part with that. Again, tech, I think would be something that freeing, there's less rigid regulation and structure around these firms. There's a lot more freedom. People are relaxed. We're here to solve problems. And then there's also an ethical standpoint, which I'm concerned about. So many of you know, if you listen to like Joe Rogan or you listen to like, you watch, I guess on Netflix, like The Social Dilemma, I am very concerned with tech. I don't think they have the structured guardrails needed. I don't think we need to go full blown US government regulatory, a million and one regulations and ruin everything. But I do think there are strong issues uh, with free speech that are going on, with censorships, uh, other content, for example, um, with skewing, misleading information that we throw this tag on of fake news. And often the people that are saying things are fake news are generating their own propaganda fake news. So I have a lot of ethical concerns across the FANG board, especially when it comes into social media firms. It's just very concerning. Even like on LinkedIn, I, I have concerns. So that's kind of where the tech one sits. Now, tech would be amazing. I could program in, in Python. For those of you that don't know, my best days ever in quant finance are me sitting down at a computer with my headphones on, with my music playing, and me just literally coding out for hours, automated systems and tools that we need to get the job done. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so in a way, it would be a dream job, but in another way, I don't know. And it's not finance. Like there's a part of me that's just drawn to finance. I understand finance. I eat, sleep, and breathe finance. Now I could do this for tech. I think it would be a new interest, a new hobby, something I would pick up as we go. But there's also a lack of rigor on the tech side in many ways. And I know I've said this to people are up in arms. How dare you say that I work in tech and we're really smart and we're... 
It's not that you're not smart. There's not the same academic standards and rigors in the majority of tech jobs. And data science just concerns me because the amount of incompetency of just throwing crap on the wall and seeing if it sticks. And I can't tell you the number of times I've heard people say, you know, I ask the question, how do you select the best model? And they say, the one with the highest fit. I just shake my head like, this is like a trap. Like you should see it coming when I ask the question. I know what I'm looking for is robustness, model robustness, model stability, functionality, causality. I'm looking for something above and beyond the simple answer of it fits well. Um, that's a whole other discussion though for tech and data science. So that's kind of the tech side. Now, FinTech, there's this interesting opportunity, a company, literally exactly what it sounds like. And I don't know why in my head, I didn't think this. When I imagine FinTech, I imagine a bunch of quants at a firm, some techie people, some finance people, but a bunch of quants because quants are basically the blend of finance and technology coming together to come up with solutions for the finance realm using technology. So this is what I'm imagining is kind of a quanty realm. I interviewed for this job, awesome team, great people, super laid back, ping pong table, I know, quite ironic here. They have the ping pong table like every other tech firm, beer on tap, snacks, uh, lunch, the three days a week that you come in. So these are kind of things that are in there, but realistically it was a FinTech. I didn't add these things up in my head. I, I don't know why. There's finance people, like legitimate traditional finance people, and there is tech people, like software engineers, data engineers, data scientists. I'm gonna throw in that Ben for now. And that was it. There was no quants. So for me, I'm just like scratching my head like, but you need the finance and the technology, but we need the stats and math here. This is the piece that is myth missing. We need stats and math and we need risk management. And so the interviews was interesting. I interviewed with a bunch of people, executives of the firm, uh, heads of departments, for example. Everyone, again, super nice, really interesting firm to work with. I would work in the office three days a week. <sighs> again, I don't like to drive. It's like a 45-mile commute. And so on a good day, like, pedal to the metal, no traffic, no issues, no weather, nothing. We're looking at, like, a minimum of, like, 45-ish minutes. And then on a bad day, we're looking like at an hour and a half, an hour 45, I think. So I'm just going to be nice and say it's an hour each way, which is probably conservative. It's probably going to make an hour 15, hour 20. But an hour each way, three days a week, that's six hours a time. It's better than 10 hours of having to go in. But the commute is just killer here. So that's a big struggle for me. The fact that there's not a lot of quantitative rigor. Again, we're going back into the rigor part. I know people are tired of me talking about this. But for me, it's really hard going in and saying, hey, we're going to build this amazing model and we have all these constraints. We need these constraints because one, it manages risk. Two, it makes the models far more robust and usable across time. We're developing a lot less. I know this is hard for people to understand unless you've built a lot of models. You don't want to be building models constantly over and over and over again. So again, medium commute time. Again, responsibility wise, it would be awesome because I think I'd be kind of like, essentially the head of risk there. Um, I'd be managing a team of quants. They would let me bring in and hire a bunch of people as long as they fit the company culture. And I'd be learning a lot. I'd be gonna be working in Python, which is right up my alley, be using things like Snowflake, which I have not used before. So it'd be awesome to gain experience in that. Product-wise, finance-wise, there's some new areas I just haven't worked in per se. So it'd be nice to learn and do all of that. And then I interviewed almost a week ago with them. Um, and I don't know what to say either. So this has put me in a bind because I really want to say yes. I want to work in FinTech. I think it's something new, something exciting. Let's hit the ground running. I want a job that isn't so soul sucking as the last one I had. The one before that was awesome, to be honest with you guys. But I wanted to grow and do new things. And there wasn't that opportunity in that current massive global banking structure here. So for me, there wasn't an opportunity to move forward quite so easily, which is why I've left that opportunity here. And then finally here, there's a banking opportunity or there might be an opportunity for me to go back to one of the global banks. Again, um, most banks in Dallas are located downtown Dallas. For me, I live out in the boonies, so out in the countryside. Um, for like the FinTech job, I'd have to drive all the way across Dallas, basically to Fort Worth, which is a massive community as I mentioned. For banking, at almost any of the banks I would go back to, 
a lot of them are downtown. There's a few little bit up north, but the downtown op opportunities in banks, those would be a, I would say an average commute for me, 45 minutes, bad day, 45 minutes, an hour if there's a car accident or something, right? I can get there. It's not really that big of a deal. Again, I don't know what the working environment's going to be like at different banks. Different banks vary from firm to firm. There were some mentions there could be some opportunities. Um, again, I don't know where these would fall. Would these fall into the research side, like machine learning research? Would they fall into uh, operations, like doing operational risks, credit risk, market risk? I am super comfortable in this realm because I've been in this for eight years. I know risk management, I know validation, I know model development. Any of these sorts of things are just right in my wheelhouse. So again, there could be some new learning. There could be some of these firms I've been talking to that have reached out to me, are more excited about machine learning and those sorts of things. Compensation I'm expecting will be in line with what I'm expecting because banking is banking is banking. It's fairly consistent across the board here. Again, which way do I go? Guys, I have absolutely no idea here. I have to let things play out a little bit. Um, I'm also trying to keep an open mind that I have three opportunities sitting on my plate today. I have not applied anywhere. Now, if I started commenting and reaching out to network contacts and applying for jobs and doing all the actual things that you would need to do to find a job, I could get a lot of other opportunities as well. And I think that's where I'm trying to look at the opportunity cost here. Like, I've got this FinTech thing on my plate. It looks exciting. I have a bunch of reservations, <sighs> commute times, compensation, and cultural differences and understanding the business from the inside out. Um, again, I have a lot to learn on that as well. So I'm trying to figure out, do I want to take this massive risk and go into FinTech? I don't know. It might last you know, six months to a year and blow up, and I'm just not happy with where I'm at. Or do I want to sit back, take the time, figure out where I'm going, line up a bunch of opportunities, be super choosy and figure out if I really want to go into tech, fintech or banking. Again, there are a plethora of issues with banking. There are a plethora of issues with tech and fintech, as I mentioned with technology, regulations and rigor. There's no perfect scenario here, but I'm trying to figure out what will make me happiest. Where will I be, you know, excited to go to work every day? Where will I be able to use my quant skills? I don't know. But that's kind of an update where I'm at. All right, I have this fintech offer sitting on my plate. Went well. Interviews went awesome. Um, I have a banking and tech offers sitting behind closed doors in a wing where they're fluffy pie in the sky potentials, meaning conversations have been had, but there's no offer. There's no guarantee. I don't even know what these deals are going to look like for compensation, for structure, for responsibilities. So again, these are all things that, <laughs> could make these deals super sweet and awesome or just absolutely terrible. So I don't know. I'm still sitting here, but this is the update. That's what I'm looking at. These are the things I'm contemplating here, right? The work, what are you actually doing on a day-to-day -day job, the commutes, the compensation, um, and the freedom. So for me, the biggest piece here, which I don't think a lot of people are understanding, I want freedom. Like I get the structure. I get the needs of these businesses. I want to be there to help. I want to make an impact. But at the same time, I like having flexibilities and freedom. I like to be able to say, okay, I'm slammed. I have to be at this conference, for example. Like I'm going to Chicago for a conference. I'm going to Austin for a conference. I'm going somewhere. I have these things I have to meet. I have responsibilities above and beyond. I want a great work-life balance, but I want to be excited and creative at work, at home, and across the board. And I think this is where a lot of people in the great resignation sit I want to be productive. I want to be a part of these big corporations or small companies or whatever. I want to make an impact, but I still need my life and I still need my freedoms. And so now I sit and I wait and I try to make decisions and it's going to be challenging because I don't know exactly which route I'm going to go. Um, there are pros and cons, as we mentioned, all the routes. But anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.